So in the SPCC report last year, they reckon 30% of mums have a, an adjustment disorder with a newborn baby, 10 to 50% mild to moderate, 3% severe, and 1 in 500 purple psychosis. Not many, is it, 1 in 500? If you're that one, believe me, it matters. In the last couple of years, we've seen quite um, a range of reports that have been done. The NSPCC Prevention in Mind is a whole plethora of information there for you regarding mums, babies and families. Um, so if you are involved with young families, which I know the vast majority of you are, I strongly suggest that you have a look at that report. Also, For Action Charity did a, an amazing study that described as suffering in science. Because through all those statistics I've just shown you, arguably they are the tip of the iceberg. Like myself, so many women don't like to come forward and admit that they're struggling. And equally over the years, so many ladies have said to me, now, now I realise that 20, 30, 40, 50, even 60 years ago, that's what's wrong, what's wrong with me. Nobody picks up on it, and I've been on antidepressants for 40 years. We're not just talking the impact in those first 12 postnatal months. It can go on and have a lifelong effect for many. And also last year, the most recent one, Tommy's Boots um, Royal College of Midwives also have done an amazing survey, which again, I strongly suggest you have a look at for more details, more statistics. And if you need improvements in your own services, in your area, then I strongly suggest that they, that's a source of information for you to use to go to your next team meeting, bang it on the table and say, hey, what are we doing about all of this? Okay. And if you do no more after today, then this has got the gold star, three ticks and a flag on it. Over in Cardiff at the university there, there is a group called Action on Purple Psychosis. And they've put a, a, a brilliant learning programme, as it says there for midwives, looking at the risk factors, so that you can be aware of the ladies in your care who potentially could be on your wider radar. And I would encourage you to have every new mum potentially on your radar. Because I say, as far as I was concerned, I wasn't the type. Who is the type? So we must take away the, any preconceived <coughs> judgments of, oh, she'll be fine, or she definitely won't. Things can happen, nature can surprise us, people can. This, there are a whole range of theories about what causes postnatal illness. There's biological, there's psychological, there's social, there's emotional. This lady, Kathleen Kendall Tackett, and I couldn't say that after a gin and tonic, um, in America, but I particularly like her survey, and she identified these purely because stress, yes, sleep disturbance, yes, pain, yes, I had mastitis twice, oh, um, psychological trauma of my son being ill, the one I can't claim to is history of abuse. Yet four out of the five, yes, that potentially caused my illness. <coughs> Kathleen also as well believes that this inflammation is an underlying risk factor as well. And that's a very interesting study. And again, the full details of that you'll find on my website. For me, how did it how what were my symptoms? I was exhausted. I felt so lonely. There's a line, isn't there, in a song about being alone in a room full of strangers. And I really felt that. It was almost like being one of those snow domes where there are literally you can see out, people can see in but you can't communicate. Very isolating. Aggressive. I'm not a bit bad-tempered. But I honestly could have sworn for people by the lettuces in Asda. And you get this almighty rage that builds up and you just want to smack at somebody. And in you know, I like to think I'm a kind and loving person. Boy, back then though, could I be nasty. I remember once speaking to the ladies at the event, and there were 300 ladies in the room. And at the end of it, at question time, a lady at the back put her hand up and said, Elaine, I have to thank you. After this, I need to go back and give my sister-in-law a hug and understanding that I should have given to her 27 years ago. 27 years ago, my niece was born. My sister-in-law stabbed my brother in the arm. He survived. She said, I've spent 27 years hating my sister-in-law. 
I feel so embarrassed and ashamed that I wasn't able to understand and give her the support she clearly needed. There are so many families still, years on, carrying the pain and the suffering as a result of postnatal illness. Irrational. I can be described as having um, a high peak, low trough personality profile anyway. When I'm happy, I'm really, really happy. And when I'm sad, everybody else needs to know. The difference is when I'm well, there is rational thought behind the peaks and the troughs. When I was unwell, I could be laughing when everyone else is crying and vice versa. There's just no rational thought there. The nervous energy I had, I was like a hyperactive bunny rabbit, boing, 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 boing. I used to think that if somebody was suffering from depression, they sat in the dark and room never went out. Maybe some people do. For me, it was that hyperactivity. And the total emotional. Those of you in the room may well have noticed that the purple letters spell my name. That's not coincidence, that's not being fancy, or well, maybe little. That's to, that's to identify with you the fact that really it's a very unique illness. That there are so many different symptoms there that one lady can be totally different from another. There are, of course, a whole range of symptoms that can be covered. And I encourage you to um, look at further into those as well.